Yes, Gawa. <laughs> This video shows how to run a test move in MotionWorks IEC, followed by a few troubleshooting tips. Before you start programming a block such as MC Move Relative, you can quickly test motion in the hardware configuration. Connected and online, under each Mechatrolink axis, the Test Move tab runs the axis according to the configured units. Help, Contents, Mechatrolink Configuration, Performing a test move is a good reference. Now let's look at this in more detail by means of an example. From MotionWorks IEC, a test move is found in the hardware configuration, this black button. Connect to go online in the hardware configuration. For this example, my machine is the MP2300 SIEC controller with two Mechatrolink servo axes. I will test SGDV Rotary 2. In the Configuration tab, you can see it has been configured 4 degrees. Before using Test Move, make sure that the controller is not in run status, otherwise, the program can retake control of the axis and the Test Move will not work. Go to My Machine and the Status tab to see if the Run LED is on, indicating run status. This is the same as what you'd see at the front panel of the controller itself. Since the run light is on, I'll temporarily stop the controller in the programming interface by going to the online menu, project control, and in the resource window, click stop. Another method is to turn on the stop switch on the front panel. Back to the hardware configuration under my machine status, I see that the run light is no longer on. So the controller is stopped, and now on to the axis that I'd like to run the test move. The move direction options, the plus means forward, minus means reverse, and the default is a forward move followed by reverse. I will choose the positive, the forward direction, for this first test move. Then choose a safe move distance for your machine. For this rotary axis, I'll start with 30 degrees at a safe slow speed of 10 degrees per second. Typical XL decel would be 10 times the speed, so 100 degrees per second squared. And I'll start with just one move cycle. Delay between moves doesn't apply for just one move, but for any moves after this, I'll just set it up here for 1000 milliseconds. And before you click start, keep your eye on the feedback here so you can tell if it's moved. Look at the value you're at right now, and I'll click start. Prompted to enable, yes. See the move's taking place, and the feedback position has updated to indicate that the move has occurred. With the motor connected to the load, I can confirm that the machine is mechanically moving the distance and direction expected. So the idea here is to keep trying different test move distances and speeds until you are convinced that the units have been properly configured and then close the hardware configuration and get back to programming. However, if test move is not moving the distance and speed expected, you want to go back and check the configuration tab and save while you're online and then under online reboot the controller. The most common reasons for an incorrect test move are either number one, saving offline instead of online, and number two, not rebooting after the online save. Also realize that the target speed of the test move may not be mathematically possible given the distance and acceleration that you've entered. If when you click start, the axis enables, but it just doesn't move, the most likely cause is the overtravel condition, otherwise known as limit switches. Overtravel is not an alarm, but they are digital inputs that allow or prohibit positive and negative motion. The overtravel inputs by default are to be connected to normally closed proximity sensors at the end of a linear actuator in order to stop that load from reaching the mechanical limit. Overtravel will be indicated on the Sigma 5 front panel as P and N for positive and negative motion prohibited. If you attempt a test move in the prohibited direction, the motor will enable but not move. 
Overtravel input status can be monitored in the I.O. tab under input 5, indicators 0 and 1. You can see here I just have a switch connected to the overtravel. If I turn that switch back on connected, that connects the overtravel sensor. And if you want to disable the overtravel feature, you can do so under the I.O. tab also, positive overtravel and negative overtravel by setting the current value to 8 set signal off. If an alarm is generated during the test move, the data you've entered may be out of range or the units configured incorrectly. Overspeed or position error alarms often are the indicators for this problem and uh, you can see that the alarm axis has a, a red color. If you click on the alarm tab you can see this alarm. Now, if you're in the test move and the axis doesn't enable it may be because that axis does have an alarm and the axis may go offline as you see here in the tree. In this case you'll have to close and reopen the hardware configuration and connect again and go to that problem axis and troubleshoot the alarm under that alarm tab. Often you can just clear the alarm. Test move failure and alarm codes can be caused also by incorrect wiring such as loose Mechatrolink cables, disconnection of the motor cable, reversal or disconnection of the motor phases, U, V, and W, or disconnection of main power, L1, L2, and L3 of the Sigma-5 servo amplifier. Performing a test run, a jog, from within Yaskawa's free Sigma-1 Plus software, which connects directly to the servo pack with the USB cable, is uh, definitely useful where you'd like to troubleshoot the wiring of the servo amplifier itself. Thanks for watching this video, and remember yaskawa.com slash IEC for application notes, videos, firmware updates, and more.